Welcome to another special edition of PSC Deep Dive, a truly expert analysis on plastic surgery topics. And it's my honor to host this deep dive on breast implants and disease. And we've got three really great plastic surgeons to share some insights with us today. We have Dr. Pat McGuire uh, from private practice Park Crest Plastic Surgery and a clinical instructor of surgery, Washington University in St. Louis. And then we have Dr. Mary Gingrass and Dr. Mindy Hawes, both from Nashville, Tennessee, who are clinical professors in plastic surgery at Vanderbilt University. For 30 years, we've been talking about, you know, does breast implants cause certain diseases, autoimmune diseases and neurologic diseases? And, you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of good studies, uh, particularly done in the 90s, and really kind of concluded with the Institute of Medicine report, which was exhausted by a multi-specialty group, concluding that, that breast implants did not have any direct cause effect with any of these so-called diseases. But we all know we see patients uh, that have concerns. We've all removed implants in some women that have had specific concerns or worries about diseases. So let's just talk about that for a few minutes. Um, Mary, what, what are your thoughts on that topic? So when I am doing a consultation and trying to help a woman decide whether she wants saline or silicone breast implants, whether she wants no breast implant or she does want a breast implant, I, I try to tell her that this is one of the most studied medical devices on the market. This, the breast implants have absolutely been through the ringer. And one of the reasons I'm concerned about this study is that, you know, we've kind of been there and done that. And there's a whole lot of women that had totally unnecessary surgery back in the 90s when the, the implants were pulled off the market and the FDA did absolutely did due diligence and, and guided us on long-term studies. And, they were released back for normal use in everyone. So I feel like this is a very well studied medical device and it's safe. I have breast implants myself. Um, I would recommend them for family members, but they do require some maintenance. I agree with Mary. They've been studied so much. And I, I when patients are concerned and we get into this in a deep dive, I talk about that in 92, they hadn't been studied. And that's why they were pulled off the market not because we knew they caused anything, but because we didn't have the answers. But we have the answers. We have decades of research now. I do have patients come to me sometimes that say, you know, six months ago I got breast implants and I'm so tired now and my hair is falling out. Most of those patients have not been to see their primary care physician. And my first stop is usually, you know, thyroid disease will make your hair fall out. Thyroid disease makes you tired. There's a lot of different things that can make us feel badly. You know, I got my breast implants in 98. I'm much more tired now than I was then, but it's been 20 years. <laughs> That's for sure. I was going to say, menopause makes your hair fall out. Menopause oh. makes you tired. So I tell them, I don't have, and I have women come to me who are concerned their implants are making them sick. I don't have any scientific data to back that up, but you got to put these implants in, and if you want to take them out, I'm happy to take them out. I just can't tell you you're gonna feel any better. And please see your primary care doctor to make sure it's not something else. Yeah, Pat, I mean, I, you know, and I, we've all seen very intelligent women who have implants and, you know, the, the ones I've seen at least, they're, you know, they're, they don't necessarily say, oh, the implant's causing the problem, but they're trying to rule out something that haven't been able to come up with any, you know, reasonable, explanation of why they have what they have and and so you know sometimes we'll remove implants and, and there have been things with saline implants you know there have been isolated cases of people finding you know but black mold or things like that within the implants but that's a, really an exception rather rather than the rule so what do you think yeah i see patients all the time who are concerned a lot of them are at the end of their rope and they're frightened they've had these symptoms they've been to their doctor they've been to rheumatologist and nothing comes back and shows the cause of their symptoms. And it can be anywhere from rashes to headaches and fatigue, uh, hair falling out, I hear a lot of times. And the only thing they can think of left is their implants. They have something in their body that doesn't belong there and they want it out. So I go over with these patients that um, there isn't any scientific data that backs that their implants are causing them to be ill. But I do believe there may be some patients who their body doesn't like a foreign material in them, whether it's a breast implant or they have a hip replacement or something, their body doesn't like it. We also all know about biofilms. I've had a few patients that I've removed their implants and have cultured 
the pocket, which looked normal, and it did grow some bacteria. So it's possible that some of these women have a subclinical infection as a potential cause uh, for their issues. Most of these patients want their implant removed and the surrounding capsule because uh, they think the capsule may contain some toxins or something that have come out of the implant. So when I can, and actually I did two of these cases today, I removed their implants, removed the surrounding capsule, and did lifts on them. These women were, are older than a lot of times when they had their implants put in, they've gone through menopause, they may have gained some weight. So they were. it was time for a change anyway. Some of these patients get much better right after you remove their implants, and a lot of it is relief. That's one less thing they have to worry about. Some of the patients go on to redevelop their symptoms. Some go on to feel better. So I think it's up to the um, plastic surgeon and the patient to come up with a plan and no guarantees it's gonna change anything. But I think for a lot of these women, it's just one less thing they have to worry about. I would echo absolutely everything that Dr. McGuire just said. But if, if they're gonna feel better that they've left no stone unturned and they're okay, I will give them my best advice and information on what their breasts are going to look like with their implants removed if we've gone through all that and they really just feel like they're they would feel better if the implants were out i absolutely am with them 100 percent and it's usually not a big deal I, I do really try to make them understand that i can't give them any scientific reason that they'll feel better or worse i have more and more people coming in thinking it's just a simple remove the implants and fill the breast back up with fat. And, and it's not that simple. So I, I do really encourage people to get good information before they you know, proceed. Yeah, I think the fat is really, I mean, you're not gonna, if you have a you know, 350 cc implant, you're not gonna in any way you know, approach that result just with placing some fat, but you may have, just it depends. I mean, you know, there's some women that have enough breast tissue, they're perfectly fine. They just have a smaller, nicely shaped, smaller breast. Uh, some people need to have breast lift. Some people might need to have something more. But um, in, the, in, the, in the case that, you know, I think some people are just worried like they're going to have a disastrous result. They just need to be educated by, you know, a well-trained doctor that can tell them, as you're alluding to, Mary, what, what their options are and what they're going to look like. So We can often show them a lot of pictures and give them a really good idea of what our, what my educated opinion is about what their particular breast will look like and whether they might want to do a lift right away or whether, whether they might want to live with their implants out for a little while and then decide if they want a lift. I have people sometimes come back and say, you know, I miss my implants. Mm -hmm. I don't feel any different and, and, you know, I'd maybe like a smaller implant in a lift. So, um, you know, we're, we're in there to, to try to find what's best for patients. Their, their needs absolutely change over time. I mean, I've had my implants 15, 20 years and I've had, uh, I had a, a, pre a surprise baby at 43 and then I've gone through menopause and, you know, my body's different and, and my, I dress differently. So sometimes people want their implants out just because they're done with them or they want, you know, something smaller or something different. It's funny, I think a lot of women don't go back to the surgeon to put the implants in because they somehow feel like they're going to be criticizing the surgeon. And I think, I know most of us in our practices try to, that we're here for you and we want to give you the best information possible. And my body is certainly not the same as it was 20 years ago. And the way I dress is different. Fashion's different. Well, Mindy, no, you actually dress the same you did 20 years ago, but that's, that's okay. It looks, still looks great on you. <laughs> some people can get away with it, and some of us can't. <laughs> yeah, in 1992, silicone implants were taken off the market, and some of us lived through that as plastic surgeons. We saw how many frightened women came to see us. I was one of a few women plastic surgeons at the time, so I was inundated with women. I've been in practice for a year who thought their implants were poisoning them after watching Connie Chung um, show where they show these very ill women who happen to have breast implants. And we don't want to go back to that. You know, this was uh, junk science. Uh, Marcia Engel, who was the editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, wrote a book about this, about how this junk science caused such a frenzy. A lot of women had unnecessary surgery to remove their implants that they thought were poisoning them. 
when it, the scientific data came out and the Institute of Medicine data came out and showed there was no link between that they could prove between silicone implants and any diseases. We want to make sure that the science going forward doesn't lead to women like they did in the 90s of having unnecessary surgery or being unnecessarily frightened. Or having, to, having choices taken away from them. Women had only a choice from 92 until 2006. The only choice they had was for a saline implant unless they're involved in a study. And we think women should have a right to all options and be able to make an informed decision themselves. So, all right, well, listen, uh, you know, the, those are some, uh, I applaud all of you for some incredible insights. You know, I think it's gonna be uh, really helpful for the viewers. So thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for the next segment of uh, Deep Dive on the subject.